we've got a lot of things heating up, obviously, with, uh, you know, the elections coming up and, mm -hmm. and everything. And one of the things that, uh, uh, I mean, I've, I've seen in my Facebook news feed, just because that's, uh, you know, Facebook's kind of a big thing to, uh, to a lot of the, to, to my audience, and that is, uh, you know, you see all these, like, AR500 ads, and they, people were just, uh, I don't know, they're just kind of going nuts over these plate carriers and everything. And uh, I get I get it for the, you know, the stuff hits the fan kind of deal, you know. It's, uh, and, and, they're, and they're cool, okay. I, I get that. But um, at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, if things get a little dicey, uh, now I, I've got friends that, well, I've got family in law enforcement too, and they're like, you know, I, I wear these, uh, uh, these, tat these uh, uh, 511 tactical pants, you know. Sure, yeah. Box and everything. And so uh, I wore them one day and they say, uh, oh, you got your shoot me first pants on, huh? <laughs> I'm like, well, what do you mean? They're like, well, you know, you got uh, uh, if you actually have a, a person who's um, who's knowledgeable going. I mean, a lot of crooks are stupid, right? But every once in a while, you run into one actually knows what's going on, and uh, they're going to shoot the guy first. This guy has his tactical pants on because they think he might he might be carrying, he might know something. So they call me shoot me first shoot me first pants. I'm like, well, I, I hadn't really uh, heard that before, but that's cool. And that's some of the arguments people use for open carry or against open carry, like, well, I don't want to be a target and everything else. Well, I'm guessing if you're wearing an AR-500 plate carrier, you're probably standing out a little bit in the crowd. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, I was just kind of thinking that maybe with your vest, you could wear it a little bit more discreetly. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, most of our, uh, the vest was designed for security guards. That's who uh, our target was when we launched the company four years ago. Uh, security guards don't make as much money as police officers, and they don't get a federal subsidy for their vest, so they have to pay, you know, the full price. And whereas police departments pay, get a 50% subsidy, and they, you know, get township money usually to buy the vest, so they have a large budget. They spend a lot of money, usually an average of $850 a vest. Oh, okay. So we wanted to launch a product that uh, the regular security guy could afford. So we made it uh, so that it's concealable under their uniform shirt. So uh, so it works well in that situation. And then um, the, the main selling point of our vest is it stops bullets. It's level 3A, so it's the highest level you'll see in soft armor. And it's $299, so it's very affordable for guys that, you know, don't make a lot of money. Well, that was one of the things that I first noticed about it was the fact that it was affordable. And yeah. uh, I even remember, maybe you can tell me, is it, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, was it uh, not legal or just not done to where civilians were allowed to buy these vests? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's the only place in America that has ever made it illegal or tried to make it illegal to own body armor was um, North Hollywood, California, after the shooting in the 80s. Okay. Um, but that... Uh, that um, that ordinance was struck down in in a, in a higher court. So um, it's always been legal. However, uh, companies that sell to police departments generally ask their retailers, or a, a lot of them, ask their retailers to only sell to um, to law enforcement. So it's not that it's illegal. It's that it's been that, that um, companies have refused to sell to the civilian market. Okay. Do you, do you sell the civilians? Yeah, yeah. Almost all our customers are civilians, okay. sure. Perfect. Yeah, because security guards are civilians. Guys that fill ATMs are civilians. Process servers, repo men, jewelers that carry, you know, lots of cash. Those are all civilians. I hate the word civilian. I, I personally think police officers really should be classified civilians. I mean, they're not soldiers. Correct. They, they serve and protect. I get it. But I don't like that word civilian. Everyone should be, you know, we're all citizens, so. Well, yeah. I, I, I concur. And, you know, the yeah. thing that, uh, the, what kind of prompted the question was, I remember back, you know, prior to Y2K, some of the people uh, I know were kind of like in that mindset, well, you know, should I get a bulletproof vest, you know? And I actually found a company, couldn't find them too easily, you know? Of course, we didn't have, I mean, we had the internet, you know, but not yeah. really have the web as we know it today, obviously. Google no, no. wasn't around. Uh, a few other search engines. But anyway, uh, and and they wouldn't sell to us, and we said, hey, you know, we're we're even, you know, got a got a, a, a an actual shooting range. It'd be nice for the range officer to be able to have a vest on, and and of course this is before some of those accidents have happened. But uh, anyway, uh, and they they wouldn't do it. So that was just kind of an interesting uh, uh, turn of events then, and and sad when people a few years later had to buy vests for their for their kids over in Iraq, 
mm -hmm. know, and because the government couldn't have, couldn't provide them or in a quantity. Couldn't get fast enough, yeah. Yeah, and I know a lot of people bought them for their kids and shipped them over there, and that had to be an experience too. But uh, mm -hmm. so I guess that's uh, that's kind of the, the one of the I guess say the kind of the first distinction is there because um, uh, and of course yeah, the plate carriers got. Now let, let me ask you a question about plate carriers. You don't you don't sell plate carriers necessarily. You do have kind of a tactical vest. Yeah, we sell we make plates. We just make bulletproof things. There's plenty of companies out there that make the carriers and the cutting and the stitching. But we just focus on the things that have to stop the bullets themselves. So we make products that go in plate carriers, like we make plates and we make a, we have a soft armor panel and that type of thing. But um, but we don't make the carriers. We let companies like Fox and Condor and Voodoo and you know Rothko and those companies do that. That's that's what they do. They they're busy stitching up duffel bags and that sort of stuff. We 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 let them do the stitching and the cutting. Now, that's, that probably answers my question, but just so it's clear for everyone, if you've got a plate carrier, any place, I mean, the, the, the carrier itself has no anti-ballistic qualities, is that correct? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're just, made out, of, they're just uh, made out of the same stuff your pants or backpack are made out of, yeah. So, they don't stop bullets on their own. So the, the, the plate carrier really doesn't have, it just has the, the vitals only, whereas am I wrong in thinking that, that your vest does a lot more than that? Well, we make like, uh, I have a couple products here. We make like this panel. Let me see it back up. So this panel can go in a plate carrier, and that will make the carrier bulletproof. I have a plate carrier here. So um, this is a plate carrier. Wow. Getting a little show and tell. So this is a plate <laughs> carrier. This one is, um, I believe, made by Rothko. But they're, they're very similar. So it's got your Molly straps on it so you can equip your flashlights and that sort of stuff. And it's padded and it has the adjustable straps so it's one size fits all. Mm -hmm. um, but inside it, it, there's nothing there. You know, it's kind of just got some foam padding. So this product, which is a soft armor panel, if you put it into the plate carrier, then you're, this is a th level 3A soft armor panel. So that will stop a, a handgun round. Okay. And then if you put in... Let's see, we have, if you put in something like this, which is like a ceramic plate into here, then you can stop like AR rounds. Sure. So, so that's kind of, uh, you know, but, um, but the coverage area here is fairly small. You know, this is 10 wide by 12 with the corners locked off. So it's like 116 square inches. And when you go to, so double that's, you know, front and back, so you got 230 square inches of coverage. When you go to a vest, like our standard vests are $299 vests, you're at like 300 to 400 square inches. So you're almost double the coverage area for just a little more money. Um, vests, we always say the plate carriers are for recreational use or for prepper use, you know, because they just cover your chest. But um, vests are for professional use. So if you're someone that... Uh, you know, has a dangerous job, then a vest and the coverage area that you get from it is probably a better choice. Okay. Well, I hope that's a good summary. Yeah. And actually, the vest behind me here is our Alpha, which is, um, it has collar and shoulder protection as well. So that's even beyond, above and beyond. If you really want to be prepped for the apocalypse, you know, you could go with, you know, this thing has like the crotch protector mm -hmm. and the shoulder collar the wraparound side. So there you're talking like, I think it's 700 square inches of coverage. Wow. Something, it might even be more into the, you get into the extra larges and that, and you're into the 800 square inches. So, well, but, one, uh, one of the yeah. things that, um, that, you know, the kind of the, the, the audience, that, for the most part, my audience is going to be, say, 40, 45 and up. I mean, we've got some younger people, and they're obviously all welcome, but a lot yeah. of them are a little bit older. A lot of them are semi-retired. Uh, a lot of them are retired law enforcement, and mm -hmm. a lot of these guys are getting jobs, uh, you know, like driving driving Uber. Yeah, yeah, very popular. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's been some incidents where some guys are like, hey, I need to be carrying when I'm driving in Uber. Yeah. And uh might make sense, too, to even to wear, a, again, a, a discreet vest as opposed to you don't want to show up in a plate carrier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so a nice so – nice Bulletproof vests, you know, is a good choice. They're easy to wear. They're flexible and light. Um, they're going to stop handgun rounds. So if you're an Uber driver, you're not going to roll up and some guy's not going to get in the car with an AK-47. I think the FBI statistics will show like 89% of crimes are done with handguns. So handgun calipers is what you need to protect against. So, 
you need you need a, like a 3A. We'll stop all the handguns, and it's flexible and it's light. Um, it's inexpensive, so so I think that a, a a vest is probably a great choice in that situation. Well, and that's one of the reasons, like I say, that, that kind of attracted me to yours because it just looks like it's a lot more, uh, uh, I don't know, just, just a lot more practical for the kind of thing that uh, that we're talking about. And one of the things that you may not have an answer to or you may laugh, snicker, I'm going to ask it anyway, but this goes back quite a few years, and uh, I'm wondering, is, is it kind of an urban legend? Was someone, did someone, or did, is there any kind of clothing that is actually ha has a bulletproof tendency to it where you could actually have a dress shirt made out of a product that is bulletproof or bullet resistant of any in any sure, way. Yeah. I like the term bulletproof. I, I, I have no qualms about bulletproof as a term. Um, so uh, is there bulletproof clothing? There's a company in Columbia. It's like uh, he's, he calls himself the bulletproof tailor, and he will make you anything you want in a ballistic material. He's not a wizard. He can't make it paper thin, but mm -hmm. he'll make you overcoats, suit coats, jackets golf jackets, um, actually anything you see the President of the United States wearing in the last 20 years has been bulletproof. Golf jackets, overcoats, um, even there, there was even um, talk that Michelle Obama's dress at the uh, Democratic National Convention might have had a ballistic component. And looking at it, I would tell you that it probably did. So, really? yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, you're talking about like a panel of this nature is, you know, a third of an inch thick. It's flexible. It could easily be sewn into, you know, a corset or some other material. So there's a man in Columbia that does that work. You know, Columbia mm -hmm. is kind of a dangerous place, and, uh, and, and he makes those things. It's not cheap. I think the pricing is anywhere between, you know, thousands of dollars on up. Okay. So, does so, do that work. Yeah, so, so, for the, so for the rich and famous, uh, there is there is such a product then. Yeah, yeah, and I've seen uh, like a golf. I think someone makes a golf jacket that's in the thousand dollar range. So so they're coming down in price. So we, we we've thought about it, but we like to see a very high. Our business is like we're like the Model T Ford of bulletproof vests. We want to hit very high volumes to make make very low prices happen. And I'm not exactly sure that. Uh, that a jacket or a sweatshirt or something like that is is that answer to that question. No, understood, understood. Yeah. And that's and that's a that's a good answer. I appreciate it because I yeah. like to say you, you hear kind of rumors of those things and you just never know what uh, you just never really know what's what's going on, what reality is versus uh, you know what, yeah. especially with the internet these days. <laughs> you see all kinds of crap that's just well, you know, crazy. You know it, it's possible to make this stuff. Like I said, the fabric is, you know, it's flexible and light. It's fairly thin. There's some things now that almost uh, are as flexible almost as like a polar fleece. They're really getting quite amazing in their capabilities. Um, you know, we're not the leader in that business. We're the value leader in the industry. But I get to see the, the fabrics and things. I get shown all of that sort of stuff. And some of it is, is amazing. Um, and if you have the money, you know, it's possible to have all that stuff made. So it's pretty neat stuff. Well, speaking of neat stuff, you've got a ball cap. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I invented a baseball cap. I could run and get one if you want me to. Oh, um, no, so I, I've seen it on the, on, yeah. you know, on, on the website. So, it, I mean, are, have you got quite a few of those out in service and yeah. people happy with them and everything? Yeah, people seem to be pretty happy with them. Yeah, every once in a while we... Um, we had to mold it to some shape, you know, so every once in a while we find a skull shape that doesn't fit. It doesn't fit particularly well, but I think for 98% of the people out there, it fits well, and it, it, it's light. The whole thing, with the cap and the panel, it weighs 8 ounces. It's reasonably priced. It's $129, and it stops at 45 so it stops bullets well. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty successful. Well, when um, it first started. Uh... When I first got wind of it, I think it was actually uh, something you were going to offer and didn't even have it coming out yet. So uh, that's good to hear. Yeah, we did a crowdfunding to help make it happen. There was a point at which I didn't know if people actually wanted it or not. Uh -huh. And it was an expensive, it wasn't, it was going to be an expensive sort of manufacturing thing to do. And so I asked my wife if she wanted to, you know, invest our money into it. We were already pretty deep in the bulletproof vest business as it is, you know. And uh, <laughs> 
So, and she's, and she said that, why don't we stick to just vests? And I thought, man, this is a pretty neat invention. And one day I just woke up and said, crowdfunding, I should crowdfund this. So we did a Kickstarter thing for it and a bunch of people pre-ordered it. It gave us the money to buy the tooling to make it and then, then put it in production. So that was uh, a, a little over a year ago. I think it's been in production since January. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, if I can ask you a quick question then about the uh, the plates, um, they're ceramic and they're steel. Uh -huh. Is is it just simply a matter of whether or not you can afford the weight, whether you go with one over the other, or? Oh yeah, there's polyethylene too. Did you know that? Uh, haven't seen those. No, it's yeah, so we make a poly. We don't make a steel plate. I'm not a. AR500 makes a steel plate, and they do a great job of it. So um, it's. It's not our customer, like the professional person doesn't buy steel plates. It's really heavy. I mean, uh, you know, I had a set and I was really, it's shockingly heavy. Oh, yeah. It's around nine, nine pounds of plate, so 20, 18 pounds for the pair. That's a, that's a lot of weight to carry around. So, oh, yeah. um, so, and they do a great job. They're nice people. I've met them at trade shows. They, 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 you know, they just do a great job. Why would I want the same reason why I don't stitch up a plate carrier? I've met these folks. I like them. I, I respect them. I don't want to compete with them. I want to do what I think I can do best. And um, so, ceramic is a lighter technology. It's um, so a steel plate's about nine. A ceramic plate is five point seven pounds. So okay. it knocks off a good chunk. Um, and uh, instead of the $89, $99 for the steel, they're $169. So I think it's a good compromise as far as cost and weight goes. Sure. Uh, um, I also like there's some other qualities. So, uh, steel plates have a good quality in that you can shoot, get shot over and over and over again, and they'll continue to stop bullets. So that's good. Right. Um, ceramic plates assume that if you get shot once, you get the heck out of there, you know? And... So that's a pro and a con, a con for ceramic, pro for steel. The pro for ceramic is that they don't have a spall issue. And spall is when the bullet spatters, hits, mm. this, hits something hard, and, you know, and spreads. And right. um, so ceramic doesn't have that problem, and steel does. So, um, so we, we chose ceramic as our the technology we should do most of, and our ceramic plates are our bestseller. Um, there's also a third technology, which is polyethylene which are these soft plates are made out of polyethylene but these polyethylene plates are compressed and they're hard and they and they stop bullets really well but they take a lot of polyethylene and a lot of compression to make so they're expensive i see so we make a polyethylene plate that's 299 dollars so steel is 99 and it weighs nine pounds i'm oversimplifying but steel is generally about 100 bucks nine pounds ceramic is 169 bucks 5.7 pounds polyethylene is 3.3 pounds so it's really like 299 dollars a plate okay and then so, can what happens with the polyethylene when it gets shot do you, do, uh, you have to get that out of there or? The best of all worlds it has good multi-shot capability it you know and it's uh and it doesn't have any spall issues so that's so it's the best of everything it's just expensive Sure, so sure. 99 bucks, yeah. And so we're working on, um, it's a volume thing. We're working on getting the volume right um, and selling more and more of those. And we're hoping that as we sell more of them, we can get the price lower. So, oh, sure. Yeah. Right now, there are, our polyethylene plate is 299 but unfortunately, we can't offer it to our dealers yet because we don't. There's, it doesn't make any money. <laughs> I guess it's the way it goes. And uh, so we're hoping to sell enough of them that we can start offering them to dealers. Then we offer them to our dealers. Then we'll sell even more. And then the, hopefully a couple of years from now, the price will come down even further. Sure, sure. As, as, as what happens with a lot of new technology. Yeah, or... yeah you kind of hope that one product puts the other product out of business. You're, but my job is to make sure you have both. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, and and for some people, you know, if they're if they've got a, and especially we talk about professionals, they they might have a two thousand dollar suit, they might have a a fifteen hundred dollar gun. Uh, you know, what's an extra hundred and fifty bucks for a, a plate that's going to save their life? You know, that's and, right. and, and, and 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 wear better because it's lighter. Yeah, when you feel the polyethylene plate, it has this um, heft to it, like lack of mass, and I it's something strange about it, but it's lighter. 
I think it's because we're used to like picking up books. Books is a common thing to pick up, like mm -hmm. sheets of paper, reams of paper. And the polyethylene plate is lighter than the equivalent amount of paper would be. So when you think, look at it and you pick it up, you say, whoa, that's light. Like it really feels light. Whereas when you pick up a steel thing, you go, whoa, that's really heavy. <laughs> when you pick up a ceramic one, like it must be between your eye and the thing you're picking up. Because at trade shows and shows where I hand this thing to, you know, we'll hand, hand it to people and hand it to 100 people and everybody says the same thing. Whoa, that's, you know, like ceramic. They go, okay, yep, yeah, how, many, how much is that? 5.7 pounds? Okay, yeah, that seems about right. And then you get into the polyethylene, which is only two and a half pounds lighter, you know? And mm -hmm. they'll go like, whoa, like, that is light. So there's something in your brain that makes one seem really light. Well, um, and, and when you're carrying this thing all day long, it's going to matter. A couple pounds thing. is going to matter. Yeah, and, and that's who buys the PE. We call it PE. That's who buys the PE plate. It's the alpha. We call it the alpha, bullet safe alpha, which is our like super duper line. And, and um, that's who buys the alpha plate. It's people who wear them all day, every day. So we're selling them to generally police officers. So. Well, and that's and that's the thing. We had I I just um, in a in a small town. I had a conversation with uh, with someone at the post office, and they said, uh, Yeah, I saw her. It was this is the day after the Dallas shooting. And they said, uh, yeah, I saw, the, saw the local chief, and I said, boy, he says, you got, got a new uniform on today. He says, well, he said, I had to change things up in order to get my vest on. Yeah. He, said, he said, I haven't worn it in years. Uh -huh. you know? yeah, like and uh, now it's like, you know, boy, you, you got to have a really safe-feeling job to not be putting that thing on all the time. Yeah, yeah, we had a, yeah, we have, we've had a very strange summer. Summer is typically kind of the slow season in the bulletproof business, but it's been anything but this summer. Between, so we have three main customers. We have security companies, security guards, and that can include, you know, everything from bouncers to ATM, you know, armored car drivers. And then we have like this um, sort of prepper recreational shooter base, like, you know, civilian, what, what mm -hmm. you call like a civilian base. And then we have police departments. And police departments will buy our vests for like auxiliary cops, secondary cops, desk cops generally not the main purchase for department just to for the all the vests where they want to save the budget so like some officers will get the premium stuff and then like animal control will get bullet safe which is fine with us we don't but they're not custom cut like the other brands so so the, so but we're happy to sell anything we're, we like to protect people so we're happy so when the orlando shooting happened that was a, an assault on security like the security guard got in a gunfight there and that drove like a big you know hullabaloo among our security customers and then when the dallas shooting happened that was a big thing for our police customers and then the republican national convention happened and that was a big thing for like our fire and ems business and, oh, okay. uh, and there was one other thing that happened, you know, they got the, so, oh, we were written up in the Wall Street Journal, and that oh, was cool. like all the wealthy prepper business. That, that was a weird week, because <laughs> we we typically don't sell a lot of size small, like, we make a size small, but it's the worst selling size, and we, we sell the security guards, there's not a lot of size small security guards out there, yep. and yep. when we were in the Wall Street Journal, we sold a whole bunch of small vests because people would buy like they'd buy like one extra large, one medium, and three smalls. And it's like, is that your kids? Yeah. So I think that's what it is. It's the mediums for the wife, and the three smalls are for the kids. And that Wall Street Journal customer just had the money to spend. It wasn't they didn't need it. They didn't use. It. They're probably not using it for their job. They just have it and they're putting it in the closet. I guess. Well, yeah, some, some accountants I work with, they say they're a 25-year-old kid, a client of theirs. Bring up a point, that, now, are, 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 the, are the bulletproof uh, backpacks still a thing, or was that kind of a fad that passed? Um, they are a thing every August, so we're okay. ready. <laughs> we just got, we just got uh, finished our batch. So well, you, you guys offer it, too. We don't make a backpack. I have kids. I know too much to make a backpack. I'm about to show you what we make. So this is a backpack panel, 
So it's um, different than this in, in very few ways. So this is 10 by 12, this is 10 by 14, and note the shooter's cut. Mm -hmm. Like that's supposed to say you can put your gun up to your shoulder. But this panel goes in a backpack. And um, so by buying a panel separately than buying a whole back, bulletproof backpack, you get to choose whatever backpack your kid wants. So if they sure. want Pokemon Go or they want Pink or they want, you know, Bratz dolls or they want multi-cam camouflage, they're allowed to choose whatever they want. Absolutely. And then the panel goes inside. Um, also, I have kids, and I know that when they have a bad day, they drag their backpack home from school or they lose. <laughs> like, they just are ki – a kid is capable of destroying a backpack in hours. So, <laughs> and if they destroy the backpack, if you have – if you pay $200 for a bulletproof backpack, you're out 200 bucks. Whereas if you have a panel inside it, you can just get a new back – you just scold them and get them a new backpack at the, the next one. The second one comes from the Salvation Army, I think. And then, um, then you can just put this panel into the next backpack or the next time. Or if you, you know, if, if you get concerned for their welfare, you can one kid's welfare, you can take it out, or you put it in your backpack, bug out bag or something on the weekend. Oh, sure. Put it in a shooting bag if you go to the range. So um, the other feature ours has, which is unique, is our uh, bolt backpack panel comes with a washable casing. Oh. So the armor panel is in here. So this is the armor panel, and this is the casing. So you take it out, and you put this part in the wash. Great. Because I have kids, yeah. and I know that you need to wash stuff that goes in the backpack. <laughs> ice cream cones go in their backpack. Uh -huh. now, I'll save this for later, and it's like an ice cream sandwich. Um, well, also, this is really durable, too. It's made out of like a 600 denier, so it's, you know, like if you put it in there with pens or a screwdriver or something, it's not going to tear. Whereas usually the UV liner for ballistic panels is fairly um, easy to tear. So, so, okay. we, so it's designed. And this is uh, $99. So it's much more reasonable than buying a whole backpack. Oh, yeah. And, and like you say, I mean, they got Pokemon Go this year. And then next year it's going to be like, Mom, that was so last year. I'm not wearing a Pokemon Go back yeah. then. Yeah. 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 Or, yeah I'm in junior can. high now or whatever, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, exactly. So, so this allows you a lot of flexibility. So I like it. And then... For us, it allows us to make it at a high volume, one product, get the volume high, get the price low. And mm -hmm. then our dealers, a lot of our dealers are like Army-Navy stores, and those places have a great backpack selection. They have, you know, all the hunter colors, all the camo colors, all reasonably priced, you know, black, red, yellow, pink, all the stuff you need. Army-Navy store is a great place for back shopping, like backpacks, and they'll and then they'll stock this one product. It's like, just carry this, put it next to the backpacks, and we'll all have a good year. So, oh, yeah. yeah. N n good way to kill a business is too many SKUs. Yeah, I tell ya. you. You're, you're talking to the king of limited SKUs. <laughs> well, let's say best come in any color you want as long as it's black. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, let me give you a chance to mention that you said in, a, in, a, in an email about uh, a video series you were doing. Oh, yeah, we have Great video series. I'm very happy about it. We've been doing it for a couple of years. It's called How Bulletproof, and it satisfies two things. One, it shows how bulletproof our vest is, and two, it satisfies everybody's desire to watch things get shot. <laughs> so so uh, what we do is we do a new, new episode um, every couple weeks or so. We, what we do really is we film them all summer with a college intern, like a film student, Sure. because they're good at this stuff. Right. And then we shoot about, and then every couple weeks we release an episode. So what we'll do is we'll shoot the bullet safe vest with a 50 cal Desert Eagle, so this oh. huge handgun, you know. And then we will shoot something else to show you what is the equivalent of a bulletproof vest. So one, the first episode we ever did, we shot, uh, we lined up 24 layers of drywall to see uh -huh. how many layers it would take to stop the same bullet that a bulletproof vest does. Do you want to guess how many it took? For a 50? Yeah. Oh, golly. Happy and drywall, so the good stuff. Uh, Got to be a dozen anyway. It went through all 24. Did it really? Yeah. So, like, oh. wow, we were all shocked. We're like, oh, my gosh. Bullets, you know, because you're used to shooting paper targets and stuff. So then we, um, so then we lined up 24 layers of plywood, like half-inch plywood, because that's a lot stronger. Uh -huh. So then, uh, that took 13 layers. So, and it's neat to see, like, 
whoa, like that's a lot of plywood. Like, 13 layers of plywood is, you know, just a ton. So, um, so we've done all sorts of things. Yesterday, we, sh we shot an episode, a few episodes yesterday. Um, we did, uh, my favorite one yesterday was car doors. Oh, so we, yeah. had, we had a police car door. We got, I went to the junkyard and got a Crown Victoria door with the window down. And uh, we had three car doors. So we lined those up. And it took one and a half car doors to stop a bullet. So yeah. went right through the door, inner door, outer door, and glass, and then went through the outer door of the next one. Now, is this a reinforced police door, or, just, or it, well, I don't know. I just went to the junkyard. So crown. just a Crown Vic, okay? Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it was heavy. Yeah. yeah, Crown Vic door is not a light door. Well, well, back when I was a kid, I had a police officer. We did some shooting. You know, we did the two, you know, just the soft two by fours, and I think a, a thirty eight did about three and a half, and three fifty seven yeah. made through about six or seven, but. Uh, I don't think we're using hollow points, so they wouldn't necessarily gotten filled and expanded, you know. Yeah. And then uh, we actually did some car doors, but then, you know, this is back in the 80s. There, uh -huh. there were doors from the 70s. That steel, it didn't take too much car door. I mean, you, you, you definitely, you know, one car door was not enough to stop a bullet, no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah, well, I was, I was surprised, you know, so. I, but then sometimes we do fun things, too, like we'll do watermelons, and we do, um, you know, we did a Thanksgiving episode last year where we did pumpkin pies, frozen turkeys, and jugs of cider. So we have like all sorts of, yesterday we did fruit cake, so we, did, we just line up, but we, we try to line up enough to stop the bullet. So sometimes it's 10 gallons of cider, you know, <laughs> just, just so you can sort of visually get the whole thing. And then we have like a couple of GoPro cameras so that you can see it happen. So oh, yeah. We make a giant mess. We put down a big tarp, we shoot all these things, just, just, I, sometimes it's fun just to watch the stuff explode, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, there's guys I think make a good living doing nothing but exploding videos on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there are, I, and some I watch them, and, I, and uh, they are fun to watch. But sometimes they're a little irresponsible. Ours is a little oh, yeah. responsible. Yeah. So, but um, it's it's interesting to see. It's it's nice too to take to add some control to the environment to say, okay, we're always going to use this gun, 50 cal, mm -hmm. and just going to show you what it can do. So over and over and over again, you get to sort of compare. Like, um, you know, what's, how, how much more, um, you know, protective, uh, like say you tried to fill your walls with gravel, sand, or dirt, like we've done all three of those things and, uh, and, and, and look at them. Gravel, by the way, is the, is the more protective. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've actually heard. Hard. I think it's because the rock is, is harder, so it stopped the bullet right away. Sure. Four inches. I think it was four inches of gravel stopped uh, stopped a fifty. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. And then um, you can tell the effect on the slug is much different than the effect on sand or um, or dirt, because the slug penetrates through and it's intact. But when it hits the gravel, by the time it gets you know a few inches in, it's just a mangled mess of of you know bits of metal, just because the hardness of the rock, you know. Was that uh, is that just on your YouTube channel? All these videos, then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's under Tom Bullet Safe. That's me. And uh, if you just search "How Bulletproof," that's the name of the series. You'll come up with it. Or if you go to um, bulletsafe.com, there's a video uh, tab. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I really like it. I like. Um, it's a great way to entertain, but also to to you know to show the the capabilities of our product as well. Oh sure. Well, I know I saw a couple of your your videos um, early on. I haven't been. Uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing all these others you've done this summer. Then. Yeah, yeah, it's they're. Um, I like them a lot. I'm I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm a proud dad of the video series, and I I'm also proud because the interns we have every summer seem to advance it each summer. Like oh. I'm a film guy. I don't know film. I'm a plastics. I'm an engineer. So the opposite of making things entertaining. <laughs> and, uh, exactly. But the people that come to work for us each each summer, like our intern AJ this year, is just you know making it better. And they like they're these young people. They come in with energy, and they you know they just add to the whole mix. It's fun to work with. Well, that sounds great. Well, I tell you what, I've taken up a lot of your time. I sure appreciate it. But is there anything else you want to say about your company or your products? No, no, really. I mean, we talked it all. I don't want to be too shameless, but it's bullet safe. We keep you safe from bullets, and it's uh, really the best value in body armor, I think. 
Well, I, I appreciate your time. I'm looking looking forward to getting the information to the the, the people we've got on you know, our website and our fan page because I I know everybody knows about plate carriers. And I just don't think very many people know that there's a, a for some people I think a better alternative than uh, than than getting this big bulky plate carrier. Is a vest? Yeah, a vest is a great alternative. I think that um, there's probably 50 vests sold for every plate carrier sold in the United States. But most of them are sold quietly to people who use them for their job. So, but they're available to people. As long mm -hmm. as you're not a felon, you can own a bulletproof vest. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully most everybody qualifies there. So. I think so. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. Well, again, I sure appreciate your time, and uh, I'll, I'll send you some links. Like I said, I just kind of, you know,